Ah. Hey, hey, everybody. Ah. It's your high school sweethearts, the sons of India. Hey, baby. Remember that night in high school? Oh, uh, how's we it going, guys? Went to the de- yeah, hey, guys. It's a weird day for us. We're all a little sick. I'm tired. Very He's tired. tired. He's in a rush. I'm sick. I'm in a rush to be sick more. A rush to get over it. Get sick. Hurry faster, I say. I need to get over it, guys. It's summer. We got stuff to do. It's a few weeks till a convention we're going to. Less than a few weeks. It's less than a few weeks. It's one and something one weeks. One and a half weeks. It's way too soon. And if I'm not over the sickness, I'm going to kill somebody. Trying to make some money, guys. We're going to have it all. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's just on our mind. We're preoccupied. It's how it is, guys. Don't worry about it. So if you hear us it's secretly doing some math in the background, that's what it is. Wait, why are we doing math? Because we're all about calculators here. But we already figured we already figured the stuff out. I'm figuring out the approximate date when I'm not sick anymore. Uh, can you do that with math? I sure can. You can do anything with math these days. Are you sure? I they got post- calculators for everything. They uh, got your sick calculator. They got your birth calculator. How many days till your birthday? It's a calculator. Do you really need a calculator for that? I feel like you just need some kind of clock. Well, what it does is... You write when it's your birthday. You put in your your day. Okay. <laughs> and then you, you, that's it. Some people call it a calendar, but it's really calculating it. it no, I don't really think it is calculating anything. <coughs> well, that's how, I'm looking at my phone right now. That's how they advertise it to me. Do you put your own birthday in your calendar? No, <laughs> I do not do that. <laughs> I don't know why that would be so funny to me. I'm looking at my phone and I can see where my birthday lies on the calendar this right. year. But I wouldn't say that it's calculating anything. Well, no, that's because that's, that's a calendar. But they do sell a birthday ca- uh, calculator. But what is it calculating? It's calculating the days until your birthday. It gets, if you say what day it is, it can tell you how many days. That's a calculator. Um, Absolutely uh, is. Um, <laughs> anyway, guys. Um, so this is a video game show. I purposely don't talk to D about video games all year. I mean, we... All year. All year. So we can have stuff to talk about for the podcast. And there's some big news, guys. New, like what, Tom? You, you were saying t- stuff before. I'm going to tell you all about it I'm right now. I'm spooked. It's not, well, it's, you're not going to care about it that much, but no, it's, been no. all, it's been all over the internets, right? Now, D. Marks is, not, oh, I'm Tom C., by the way. That's D. Marks. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be saying the word spooked a lot. You're not, it's not going to be spooky. Oh, D. Marks okay. is an idea man. He, he's, a, he's, a, he's a go-getter. He gets these things done. He always has these ideas, these projects. Here's the deal, guys. You may be aware of this website called Kickstarter. Kickstarter. Are you aware of this website? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I've donated to a few projects on that. No way. Where are you getting all this money? Like ten money bags, marks like here. ten bucks. Jeez, whoa! I could use ten bucks for this project. Anyway, so uh, a big deal lately. This thing I don't know how to pronounce it. It's spelled O U Y A. It's either Wea, Auya, Oya. O U Y A. O U Y A. It's a lot of vowels there. Uh, I would say it's. <laughs> I would say it's, it's all vowels. Auya. I would say it's. Or maybe Ouya. So just for the sake, because we don't care about how it's pronounced, and I'm going to probably be against it, I'm going to call it Oh Yeah. What about Yeah Yeah? No, it's Oh Yeah. Okay. So anyway, um, they ha- there's this big boom, because this project was released on Kickstarter, and everyone's into it. It's called Oh Yeah. Oh Yeah. It costs $100, and here's what it is. That's a high, low level. What? That's a high starting tier, 100 bucks. Well, that's what the thing's going to cost. Let me explain it. Oh, the project. The product, when it sells. What? It's going to cost $100, and it's a console. What? <laughs> right? Well, what are you saying what about? <laughs> Is that too low for you? I don't even know. Just, just go on. I'm, 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 I'm... <laughs> it's $100, and the point is they wanted to make a completely open source, moddable thing, and essentially it has like a... It would be more for uh, independent games and like indie stuff. But here's the deal. It has some pretty strong hardware, and by strong, I mean not that strong. Okay. It's got like a crazy process or whatever. But essentially, it what it is is it's here's the part where you become uninterested. Okay. I'm it's, looking. At, I'm looking at it on the Kickstarter right now. Essentially, it's a it, uh, a machine for Android based phone games, so you can play them on your TV. What? It's, that's exactly what it. I'm not making this up. Wait. Just for Android phone games. Ba- basically, basically that's the 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 system it's using. Um, oh, well, well, the Android doesn't that use ice cream sandwich? I don't know any of these things, man. Oh. What's an, well, I could use an ice cream sandwich, but I don't understand. The... That's not uh, just no. <laughs> anyway. So the thing is, 
Um, this project got a lot of attention. Uh, it's up to almost $5 million. Yeah. It, it has still a... has 23 days to go. When did it start? Uh, Is it only for 30 days? Maybe. So anyway, they just put that up and immediately got a huge amount of buzz and everyone donated to it. Yeah. But what everyone doesn't realize is that that's a really weird idea. Because here's the deal. That's a good idea. Nobody really wants to play cell phone games on their TV. Right? Uh... <laughs> See, you're looking at the thing. That's not the real problem with it. The real, real problem is there's absolutely no way $5 million is going to fund a system. That's never, ever going to happen. Yeah, Because it's not po- even made at all yet. But the point of Kickstarter is that, like... That's, it's just like investing money, essentially. Yeah, but th- there's not going to be a return on this investment. No, absolutely not. It's, 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 that's the whole point of Kickstarter. Yeah. The, people are saying that now it's, it's good, it, they'll use that and be like, hey, companies, people are interested in this product. But regardless, it's a very weird idea, and it, I don't know that it would ever actually make it to market. But yeah, if you, if you pledge, uh, a hun- if you pledge $99 or more, you get a console and controller. Neat. By uh, March 2013. What? And it hasn't even started yet? They have, like, what it would look like. And I think they have a basic concept. They, they have but to. But they, they have not fabricated the system. But anyway, guys, this has been all over the place. And it's been getting a lot of mixed reviews from the internet, which is all I'm doing. You know, is on that internet. Oh, but <laughs> there's one, there's one uh, pl- uh, pledged here for 1300 and thirty seven dollars and it's the elite tier. Oh, you laugh. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, um anyway, go on. But yeah, it basically if you like you didn't watch the, the, the video, but the video's like this lady, she's talking all about how great it is, and she's like, I wanna play games on my television. She's like this bigger lady. <laughs> but all she she keeps saying television like sixty five times. And it's super weird. But anyway, I have no interest in this product and I don't care if it very long. Uh, I mean, it's an interesting idea. I like the fact that uh, people are trying to do stuff like, like that. Because it might also be like an uh, an emulator thing. A lot of people could put like the games on there. The games. But like, yeah, I, it, there's nothing that a laptop isn't already doing. A lot of these I, features are just things that like if you can hook your computer up to your TV, you got but it. But I wonder if that's, if that's really the case or if they're actually going to be able to do something a little more with it, you know? Maybe. It's got some pretty impressive hardware, but not that impressive. That's what I'd say. Because you think, it, yeah, it's like got like a, it's got like three cores, three double cores, three cores, triple, triple over cores, cores. But let's say uh, I'm not going to go on about this whole time because I don't have that much about it. I'm not that interested in it, but it's been all it's over a, the. So uh, would you call it a mystery machine of sorts? Yeah, absolutely. I don't know anything about it, but it's all over the news. Yeah, it's... the internet news. I mean, uh, it's interesting, and I do like. Well, uh, what do you think about uh, Kickstarter in general and Kickstarter projects? Oh, I, like I said, I've donated to one or two. <laughs> Right. I've donated to the uh, Order of the Stick Kickstarter, which was like, by the time it was finished, it was like the fourth highest. I think this might actually beat it. This Aouya might actually beat it out now, but it was like the fourth or third highest Kickstarter project right. ever. And I also donated to the uh, Wasteland. Wasteland 2. Yeah. like That's some kind of Fallout thing, guys. Yeah. I don't know anything about it. It's like proto Fallout. But I donated to it. I guess there's nothing to not support. Like, there's no reason to hate it, but I don't know that that you're going to come back and actually see stuff that's like, you know, I don't know that anything's going to be really be done here. It seems like it easily could be for scamming people. Not scamming, but Well, the whole point of Kickstarter is that, like, one, if you don't don't raise your funds by the end of, like, the 30 days or whatever, you don't get the money. Hmm. Two, uh, you have to have a finished product. (laughs) And it has to be something where you could. Actually... No, we couldn't kickstart our podcast as a shit. Dude, I know because I would, I would. We could probably get some money. <laughs> well, what, the thing is, we don't need money for this project because we already have it. Yeah, but. I mean, if you build awareness, if you want to just pledge your awareness. Exactly. I need a hundred units of awareness. There was this one. There was this one penny <laughs> arcade comic. It was talking about Kickstarter and like, it was a Kickstarter for um. Oh, it was it was for a guy named Joe Video Games, right? Who invented video games, but he didn't patent it, so he didn't get any of the royalties from video games. And it was like a really obvious, like fake scamming thing, but it's really funny. <laughs> Penny Arcade's so good. But anyway, now, uh, so we're gonna get out of there because I don't have anything else to talk. Get about. out, guys! Order biz number two. Steam sale. It's happening. It's happening today, and for this entire week till the twenty second. Oh, twenty second. Yeah, dude. Dern. 
It's like that's the problem though, is we get paid on effing every other Thursday, and I couldn't have this thing. If only we got paid on the other other Thursdays, right? The other Thursdays, or every week. Let's just get paid every week. Yeah, let's stop with this crap. But like anyway, guys, every other one. Who cares? I'm sure you're buying games on the Steam sale. What'd you get so far? What'd you get? I got both Dead Spaces. Dead Space One and Two. Uh, Mirror's Edge. Mirror's Edge One. Oh, what else did I buy? The Witcher, the first one. It was only five bucks. How can I not buy that? Yeah, and your machine can run it pretty well. Oh, it could. They don't even act like it couldn't run it. It could run the f out of it. But that's what I've gotten so far, guys. There's been some crappy games on this one. They're not. They're not giving me the goods yet. Well, isn't everything fifty percent off? So, I don't know how true that was. That's what I said. I think it's wrong. But a lot of things are very, very inexpensive. I was already bought every game ever. Yeah, you bought you bought most of the stuff before. Well, like I just, I don't, I don't know. You what bought I'm, most of the internet of games. I don't know what I'm waiting for. You know, like what what thing do I want that I don't have? Well, I don't know. That's I can't really answer that. Like what, what games have we? Like nothing. There's nothing to play. I did it. I beat all the video games on Earth. Well, what if like a, a Arkham City was on sale? Arkham City, I think, was on sale, and I didn't buy it. Hmm. Which is weird. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's like Spec Ops: The Line was on sale, and we wanted to buy that, and then I didn't buy it. Yeah, it's a real shame. Hey guys, I'm not gonna spend more than ten dollars on a Steam sale. No. That's not what I do, right? I don't, I, I just don't know, dude. Steam sale's not my thing, dude. I know, but it, it, everyone's gonna be like, oh, "I'm doing this thing." I love Steam sale. Steam sale's great. It's truly great. Uh, thing three, just heard today. Sonic Adventure 2 HD Remake's coming out. Super yazzed about that. But uh, why? What? Oh, 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 sorry. I got my Sonic games confused there for a second, and I thought you just meant Sonic 2, and I was like... Yeah, it's already why would you? Why would you need an HD just of a side-scroller thing? But it's the... First of all, they do that all the time, but go on. Will you HD remakes of, of 2D side-scroller games, yeah? Remember they made a, a Street Fighter 2D HD thing? Was that what that was? Well, they did it, yeah. Well, that's that stupid. was a while ago. That's stupid. It's not stupid. They do uh, like uh, new sprites and stuff, and it looks really crisp and clean. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> a lot of people care. <laughs> they make a ton of money. <laughs> make a ton of money. Well, those people are dumb. No, they're not. I'm one of those people. Mm, still pretty dumb. Not dumb. Still pretty oh, dumb. Oh, I'm waiting out for Half-Life also. Still pretty dumb. There's nothing dumb about it at all. You can sit there and say it's dumb. It's it's dumb. Why? What's dumb about it? Because like who, now I, we're doing this right now. You're gonna tell I like all about the it. the old school like sprites and stuff. I don't think they need to be. Well, in... then you subscribe to the I don't like it, so it's dumb policy. No, which no. Is what babies I'll tell you do. what it is. It's like colorization of black and white movies. It's stuff that doesn't need to happen. Mm, it's not like that at all. But go it's on. It's very much like not that. Like that at all? Because you're like I enjoyed this game in its classic form. Just like I enjoyed Casablanca and it's black and white. This is such BS. No, it's totally app. <laughs> it's not at all. They're like, now we're just going to rework almost... it because some people need more money by selling me the same game again and totally effing with it, something that doesn't need to be effed with at it's all. It's not being effed with. It is. That's wrong. You're it's... saying something that's not true, though. It's being it's being changed for no reason. Okay, well, here is the reason, because uh, apparently you don't know what's going on. Do you ever play a game uh, on, let's say, the uh, an old console, right? Okay. On this TV, guess okay. what happens? It looks like a crap. It has to scale up. It looks bad. It'll look fine. I've done that before. It looks fine, but why wouldn't I want it to look great? Because For those mi- games were never meant to look great. That's not stupid. Every game That's has- BS. Not it doesn't every make any game- sense. It doesn't make any sense. Not every game has to look great. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. No, not everything has to look great. Not every game no, has- no, no. Okay, it's still going to look like it. It's just going to look optimized for the current generation of televisions. Still? It's not like they remake the game with funnier colors or something. Yeah, I know that. I don't know what you think it is. <laughs> that anyone could be opposed to this is outrageous. You could be opposed to selling it. That's true. If you're like you were like, well, if they released it for free, that'd be fine. But you're like, I don't want this at all. I've I don't I don't I don't need it. It's craziness. Why? Who cares? Well, it's like I don't want to see things better. You can see them fine on your TV. I don't understand if this product is being made. What's wrong with it? Because it's it's just another case of people trying to sell stuff to people that have games people already have. And people want them. I would love HD remakes of games. That's definitely a market I'm all about. Gives you an excuse to play them again. Yeah, I would totally be down with 3D uh, with HD remakes of games like Final Fantasy X, uh, Metal Gear Solid remakes, 
They made a de- Devil May Cry. 3D games. Yeah, games that are supposed that games for at the time were supposed to actually be like you know graphically good. 2D like sprite things. Who gives a crap? They're never supposed to look great. Hmm. I don't know about that, dude. I, the, they were supposed to look good at the time. They're supposed to be stylized, but they still don't look right. They look good, and they're going to look like them, but they're just going to look better on the things. But how much better could they really look? A ton better. Like, I don't know how to, like, explain the difference. Like, what was an HD remake that we ever played? We played the Metal Gear Solid ones. Yeah, those looked a hundred billion times better. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. But for like, those, we, uh, for ne- those games, it's fine. Hmm. It makes sense for those games because those are 3D games where optimizing it for an HD setup... You know, is a legitimate idea. I if absolutely all don't agree with this. If all you're right worried now. about is just like slightly having to change the output so that it doesn't scale up weirdly, it's better than that. I maybe undersold it. With you that. could still sell the, you could still play the game on it. Yeah, but I don't understand. It it looks better. It's two D that looks better. There's nothing wrong with it. There's no there's no losing there. Except you're out like another like twenty bucks for no reason. They usually don't charge that much. They, they probably do for like those collections. It's like forty. If they, if they, yeah, that's true. That's true. I don't care. I'm still going to get it. Uh, well, we're talking about Sonic Adventure 2, and that's a legitimate one because that's a 3D thing. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's why that works. That's true. But if they released uh, HD uh, Guilty Gear X2, you know we'd be buying that. I, don't, I wouldn't need, I wouldn't see you the need for You wouldn't buy it because you don't buy anything. Yeah, obviously not. But I wouldn't see the need for it. Because... We already played Guilty Gear. It only looks fine on this TV. Because it's going to look 100 billion times. You just haven't seen to believe yet. That's what we're talking about. I've seen here. HD before. It looks great. But not every game has to be in HD. Not everything has to be like 100% optimized all the time. It's like some kind of weird fictional world where not everything has to be in HD. I don't even understand it, gamers. Everything has to be in HD. Why? Because that's what we're using now. Like, the difference between standard def and HD is so big. It's tremendously better when you see stuff in HD. But it still looks fine. Okay, it can look fine. But it could look way better. I don't need to be blown away when I'm playing Sonic, though. I don't need to be like, oh, man, getting all these rings and rolling around the ground. This was totally worth getting in HD. Dude, so that's some people's favorite game, though, you know? Yeah. Probably a lot of people want to see that in an, uh, an HD remake. <sighs> it's not for you. I think, I think it's a lot not of, for no, you. No, I think a lot of people, would, I think a lot of purists would not want an HD remake. I don't think there is purists like that. I think there are, like me. I'm one of those guys right now. Yeah, right. You just don't want to buy that thing. No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm making a legitimate point here. I don't know why everything has to be totally retooled back to HD. Why don't you go it's listen like to why, vinyl then, jerk? I do listen to vinyl sometimes. Ooh, um, D Mark's the hipster. No, it's like I see like, and now, the ultimate HD collection. Okay, like oh, movies citi- are worse. No, like Citizen Kane, Blu-ray. And I'm like, why do I need to be graphically blown away by the movie Citizen Kane? It's not a graphically intensive movie. Is it's the, would, I, would I buy a Blu-ray of Avatar if I ever wanted to watch that and then immediately throw up afterwards? <laughs> yes, I would do that because, you know, that's supposed to be a visually stunning movie. But Citizen Kane, the, like doing a re- an HD remake of that would be totally useless for because... Who would want that? It's not necessary. A lot of people would want that. Because it, it would just look... Because I know what you're saying. It doesn't matter what it looks like, but it would look way better. But but it doesn't have to look better. <laughs> it doesn't have to look better. It doesn't have to look better is my point. Okay, regardless, this thing's going to exist. And a ton of people are going to buy them. Well, that's fine. But don't, don't count me as one, because I will not buy it. <laughs> that, I'm glad we talked about this, because I'm going to have to take back some birthday presents. Jeez. Thought you'd love Metal Slug HD remakes, and also a seventy-five foot TV. I was gonna get you. Well, I'll take the TV. Nope. You don't want the thing, so forget it. How, where would I put a seventy-five foot TV? Oh, it doubles as a house. Sorry though. <laughs> it doubles as a house. That's how TVs work in the future, man. That's a really small house. Seventy-five foot. It's more like a shack. By a thousand feet. Okay. Well, those those that's just proportionally bad. It's a wide house, dude. Wide? I thought I thought it would be long, like a shotgun shack. Well, it depends on wh- wh- where you're looking at it from. Well, I guess one one wall would be the TV, so it would be wide because the front door would be on the side <laughs> where the TV isn't. I think we're 
doing a little, going into the minutia a little too much here, guys. Uh, these are the things you got to think about, man. Uh, I don't know. That's what about sets that. us apart. I don't know. We're uh, professional podcasters. I don't, I, I'm never going to be able to convince you about this thing, but, you know, I think... No, like I said, Snake Eater HD? Yeah, okay. Uh, you know, Metal Gear Solid 2 HD? Devil May Cry HD? Yeah, okay. I get it. I see that. I see the need for for something like that. Make things a little crisper, a little cleaner. But, like, I've never... you've seen redone nev- sprites, it's amazing. Never have I gone back playing, Oof. like, you know, Super Mario World and been like, you know what? This could be better. I Dude, feel like this could be better. When you see redone sprites, it's really, really great. Like it looks really great. But I, I don't care. Okay. I just don't. <laughs> well, you're free to not care. But still awesome. And also it doesn't matter at all now that I remember that we're not even talking about that. No. <laughs> we're talking about we're talking about an entirely different game. Guys, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle was an awesome game. Awesome game. I play that game so much. So much. Was now that the doing... one with, with uh, Shadow? Yeah. It's got the Chow Garden. You got all your cartoon pals. Wait, is that the one that has Pumpkin Hill in it? Got Pumpkin Hill in it. That's a good song. You got... No, dude, it's got a great soundtrack for no good reason. Yeah. You're like, why does Sonic need a soundtrack that's so good? Move with a V. Okay, well, Knuckles is for some reason. <laughs> it's because oh. he's the blackest. You got Rogue the Sexual Bat. Sexy Bat. Tails the... Sexy. Sexual tales. deviant. <laughs> Dr. Robotnik, the robot guy. They're all there. He's a machine fetishist. <laughs> it's going to be great. Remember in the original Sonic games, whenever you destroyed one of Robotnik's robots, like the little like bird or something, or like chipmunk would jump out? Yeah. Because they're all controlled by robots. The other way. They're all inside. The robots the are all controlled by ro- or little animals. The animals are not controlled by robots. That's not what I said. I said the, the robots you are listen controlled back, by little friend. animals. You said the robots are controlled by animals. I did not say that. Well, you're going to listen to it and you're going to say... I did not say that. <laughs> We're taking a break, guys. Goodbye. Right? I guess. Okay. See you. Oof. Welcome back, everybody. I get a text message the second we start. Um, guys, what a jerk that guy I'm, is. I'm not responding. Yeah, okay, yeah, they yeah. are. Yeah. I'm should, not responding. They should know better. I'm the good guy here. Come on. Guys, you understand we're a little sick. Uh, but here's the deal. We can't think of jokes, so we're going to work together to make jokes for you. Okay. Because... I'm, I'm not sure how I feel I about understand. this. I understand the beginning was a little bit without comedy. It had tons of comedy in it because we're so effing funny. We're great all the time. Well, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to make the best jokes. We're going to make a few of the best jokes of all time. Here's okay. how we're going to do it. You're going to give me a setup, and I'm going to give you a punchline. Okay. We can switch off if you want, but this is how we have to do it. So how long do you want the it's setup? A, it's a comedy improv- improvisation thing. How long do you want for a setup? You, I don't know, dude. Just give me whatever you got. It can be how long and how short you want. Okay. I suggest not that long, and I suggest fairly short. Okay. <laughs> All right, it's comedy. Man, it, I'll do. I'll do. I'll do the. I'll do the next setup. Have okay, that. man comes home from work. He sits down in his chair, and his wife comes up to him and asks him, "What do you want for dinner?" He says, "Dinner." Classic. Okay, here's mine. Um, Guys, do you hear how not <laughs> laughing I am? With that? <laughs> I'm doing anti jokes. That's what I'm doing. Okay, so anti comedy particles. Uh, two cars, a guy backs, a guy backs into another car. The guy gets out of his, uh, the guy who got backed into comes out, starts to yell at the guy. The guy starts to apologize saying, sorry, I can't word it right. Okay. Hold on. Let me try this. All right. So a guy backs into another guy's car. Yes. The guy who got hit comes out and starts yelling at the guy who hit his car. Yes. Thank you. The guy who hit his car comes out of his car and apologizes by saying, saying, uh, punchline, punchline, uh, See, jokes are hard, guys. You don't know the work we put into it. This is kind of a showing, you guys, how much work we put into it. If you didn't just jump through the time gate into the back of my car, I wouldn't have hit you. Great. That's what I'm talking about. But it's natural for us to make these incredibly funny jokes. Each one funnier than the last. Classic jokes. Give me another one. Okay. 
I'm not going to do this all day, but we need at least one more. An elephant, <sighs> Great. a cooper, and a, a bird of prey walk into a bar. And the bartender says, Hey, you hanging with Mr. Cooper? Nailed it. Oh. Remember, that, remember that show? It didn't yeah. have Sinbad in it, but it had that guy who reminded me of Sinbad. I think it was Mark Cooper. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, he was, that was the character's name. I think it was his name also. No. It was Sinbad. No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about video games. <laughs> I can't believe you were like, really thought I'd... All right, just go on. <laughs> hey guys, I don't even know what's even... Guys, uh, I'm drunk on sickness. Let's move on. Uh, guys, this is what happens. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, indeed. Guys, we're so sick. Not of you, but of, no. of sinus infections. Okay, Tom, here's what I was thinking about. <coughs> Remember how you were like... I don't like where this is going. It involves me. <laughs> yeah. Remember when we were playing Lonesome Road, and you were like, Ulysses sucks, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, because he's an idiot. Yeah. Those were your exact words. Yes. Uh, what do you think makes a good antagonist in a video game? Because I would say... Well, there's a bunch of different types of antagonists. I was about to go into something. Go Okay. That's why I said I, w- I would say. I, I would say you're right. Because uh, I would say one of my favorite antagonists in a video game is from New Vegas. And uh, that's Father Elijah from Dead Money. Okay. I think he's, uh, I think he's driven. I think he's uh, relatable in a lot of ways. And I think he's... Kind of has a, you kind of question the madness a little bit, you know. Um, I don't think anyone would agree with you that he's relatable. I think he's got a lot. I think he's got a lot of passion. I think that's that's a relatable thing. I think he's willing to be. I think you can see where he's coming from. Okay. Because you know? he wants to see his people do good, and no matter the cost. I don't know if that's exactly explained in the game. But anyway, the point is not that. It kind of is. <laughs> the point is. Um, what makes a good protagonist? Antagonist. I was about to say. It's not what I asked. <laughs> the thing is, there's a lot of different types of villains, and it really depends on the circumstance. Oh, yeah, guys. Antagonist means villain. Does it? Is that a joke? No, that's what it means. <laughs> uh, it doesn't necessarily always mean villain, does it? Oh, well, it's someone who's stopping the protagonist. Couldn't you have, like, a bad guy, but then, like, a protagonist who is also doing stuff? Couldn't there be more than one protagonist? Not really. All right. So anyway, there's different types of villains in games, you know? You got, like, the crazy guy who's just crazy. The yeah, sake of being those, crazy. Are, those, are, those are generally the worst. No, there's no they're, they're bad, but they're not the worst. The, one of the worst is, I'm the evil guy. <laughs> I'm doing it because I'm evil. Uh, I don't know. I think, you, if, I think if you do a, I'm evil, well. Yeah. I mean, I guess I you guess, win this round. I mean, the guess. I guess you really could say that about anything. Like, if well, it's, yeah, if you do something well, of course it's gonna be good. Like a good example of the I'm evil is Ganondorf. That's true. He's he doesn't have he has a backstory, but really he's just evil for evil's sake. You know. Well, no, because uh, Ganondorf always wants power. Okay, well maybe that's not then. Just that's, not. that's that's his, that's his deal. He's like, gotta give me that Triforce, B. Well, then I guess he's not. Then he's just not. I'm evil. Then he's uh, means to an end evil. Well, that's still evil, because he wants it for evil purposes. Except for in whatever that game was. Wind Waker? Yeah. I don't remember what his purpose was in that game. No, Ocarina of Time, because he just wanted to bring the Gerudos back. Yeah, I don't think that's what happened. Maybe. Because they were already doing fine. Let me tell you a little history. He, of wa- he wanted to do something with them. Well, the Gerudos are doing just fine, because it's once every 1,000 years a, a man's born. Don't ask me, dude. That seems weird. Yeah, and so he was that guy. They're always doing just fine. They have a whole, they have a whole desert over there. So, wait, once every thousand years a man is born. I don't, just, just don't ask it. Uh, don't ask that question. So uh, anyway, are they like immortal? I don't, I don't know how it works. I forget the story. It's been a while, guys. Okay. It's all, if only they made an HD remake of it. Oh wait, I think they did. Well, they made some kind of remake. Anyway, guys. Um, no, there's a lot of types of villains. Let's. I'm gonna name my favorite villains. Okay, that's fair. Go, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I don't know. I normally do like the crazy villains. Uh, well, give me an example. Like, would you consider I know from Guilty Gear a, a villain? Uh, she's she's the main boss. She's more of the, and she's always the protagonist in everyone's story for the sake of being evil. You mean antagonist? 
God, man. No, I think uh, I think she's less. I think she's an antagonist, but I don't think she's a villain. Okay, see, there's something. Because she's trying to stop the people. <laughs> I'm not as good as these classical themes as you. Because she's trying to stop people from doing stuff, but she's not doing it for any kind of like. He's doing because she's, it she's it for her own personal gain. She's doing because she likes messing with people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I wouldn't really say she's a villain. Hmm. But okay. Like in the first one, in the first two guilty in Guilty Gear the original and Guilty Gear X, they say that Testament is a villain because he's like, I'm going to kill all the humans. That's pretty good. I like hanging out with Bender from Futurama. Ugh. It's a good joke, right? Uh, uh, no, because uh, Testament wants to kill all the humans because he wants Gears to rule the planet because hey, he baby. thinks. All right, try again. Want to kill? All right. Uh, <laughs> As you can tell, we're sick. I'm sorry. It's gonna be called the sick episode. Sick podcast. So, uh, yeah, the six of video. So that would make that's good. It's so bad. So that Everything would... we do is terrible. <laughs> oh. So that's what we would make. That's what would make Testament a villain in those games because he's trying to kill all the humans. Same thing I would say with Justice, although to a lesser degree because Justice is in a bonus character. Yeah, but okay. So you're saying they're. Vi- I don't know what your point was. You're saying they're villains. Period. No, I was saying I know is not a villain because she. Doesn't have specifically like villainous goals outside of being a dick. <laughs> but isn't that villainous? No, not really. Because like nobody considers Deadpool a villain. And Deadpool's Dude, but no, there's a lot of villains who are villains just to mess people up because they want chaos. Uh, totally. Like sort of the Joker. Joker's different. You didn't want me to bring up the Joker. I know. No, the Joker's different. We had yeah, the, know, we had the I, pre-show meeting. I know. Don't bring up the Joker. I know is not the Joker. He's the Joker of that game. Not really. Who is? Did you dare say Zappa. I was going to say Slayer. That's a totally BS and not Why? even true at all. It's, it's just not it's not accurate. I don't think I know as the Joker. I don't think anyone really fits that thing. Someone who's more about chaos and like self-serving? But Joker's not even about self-serving. Joker's just mostly just about chaos. Anything he does is because he wants to have fun. That's not really... He's not doing it for any kind of gain outside of his own entertainment. That is the game. <laughs> That's his, it's entirely for his gain if his gain is just getting entertainment. Yeah, but I don't think I know really like that, though. I think that's exactly what she's like. I don't. I don't know. Regardless, no one played Guilty Gear but us. So, anyway. <laughs> uh, anyway, I don't, you haven't hit a single villain. I, I'm not going to do it because I'm bad. Why don't you go what? on? Why not? I can't think of anything today, dude. I'm trying to think. I thought of one and it was weird. <laughs> Tell me some of yours. You're a classic theme guy. Well, I like, like I said. Don't saddle it on I like, me. I like Elijah. Okay. And you like him because he's relatable, which I feel is dumb. that's not that's not really the main point there. <laughs> <laughs> he's an understandable villain, like he you know kind of fell out of disgrace from the Brotherhood, and they wanted to make a means that he could a kind of get his own like prove that he was right to the Brotherhood after all this time and destroy the brother or destroy the NCR. That's only sort of accurate. You're kind of twisting that one. What? That's exactly it. He was totally effing like mad. Yeah. He was driven insane by the by the. the he wasn't like I'm gonna show those Brotherhood guys. He's like I'm gonna get this done because I'm crazy. No, but the, the the craziness stemmed from the whole fact that he was like booted. At, he was you know suffered the major defeat at Helios One. He lost to a technologically inferior. He was he was almost already crazy by that point. He was crazy because he couldn't figure out why it wasn't happening. He 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 wouldn't have made a like catastrophic uh, strategy failure like that. He was a little bit crazy. Uh, well, that's not entirely true. It's not entirely true. Anyway, I don't know. Ulysses is a bad villain in that game because he's his his his. his we're talking about New Vegas guy still. But the thing is, uh, his his problem is stupid, and what he's going to do doesn't make any sense. See, I've never agreed with this. We're I guess we're getting into it right now, but it's stupid because his problem is the courier accidentally delivered some bomb or something or something that made these nukes go off. Courier doesn't know anything about it. And Ulysses gets real bummed about it, so he decides that he's going to blow everything up. No, that's not what happened. Okay, tell me what happens. Okay. Ulysses is less mad at the Courier and more mad at the NCR, because the NCR was specifically tooling around with things that they had no idea what it was, bringing a dangerous and unstable technology into areas that they knew were already dangerous and unstable, which would be the divide where all these nuclear missiles were kept. Uh-huh. When the Courier brought the Enclave trigger control device... To the Divide and Hopeville, where the town was, it attracted the attention not only of the NCR, but also the Legion, and it brought the war in the 
it brought the war up for uh, Hoover Dam to this new uh, founding community and uh, that almost killed it, where this new nation was rising. Okay. So, really, Ulysses is less mad at the courier than he is mad at the NCR. But, like, he makes... The, everything involves, like, messing with the courier, and he wants the courier to come to him for some reason. I think it's so that the courier can just see, like, what happens when, you know, you, you're not careful with stuff, and you don't really pay attention in, to the past and warnings and stuff like that. Like, Ulysses is all about the past. Even though he says that he d- isn't really a nostalgic person, he always thinks about his lost tribe and leading the white legs in battle against the new Canaanites and stuff like that. So he was going to shoot a nuclear missile at something. At the NCR. Okay. Because the NCR was the ones who ended up destroying Hopeville by bringing the trigger mechanism into it. But he's not always going to... Wait, is he always going to send the NCR? Yes. Hmm. Did you think he wasn't going to do that? Because <laughs> he, he hasn't trained the Mojave. He hasn't trained specifically at the NCR. Hmm. How can he make it hit both, then? There's more than one missile, I guess. I guess. Because I think the, the original coordinates was supposed to go into, like, shady sands. Like, actually, like, deep in. Deep in, yeah. Deep in. Um, maybe that's not as bad as I originally thought it was. Yeah, did you think he always was just going to nuke the side that you were siding with? I thought he was going to hit the Mojave. I thought, oh. I, thought, I don't know where I got it so wrong. Yeah, because he talks about it. He was like, he talks about it, he's going to destroy the NCR. It's just that the they had to incorporate that there's part of the NCR in the Mojave for the fun little bonus uh, side areas, you know? Yeah, and for, I guess, canon reasons. Yeah. So, um, you, so that if stuff does go off, it's not just, like, off in the distance. But also, Ulysses doesn't really have any real stake to that. He has no real reason to care that much about Hopeville. He just watched it, and he's like, well, that's neat. Now he's like, ooh, I'm sad because they're dead. Oh, that's not... It's weirdly... Uh, it's 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 kind of weird. I mean, I think the fact of the matter is he, it, was the, it was a place where he thought he could be long, you know? Mm, yeah. Because uh, Volpes betrayed his tribe. Uh, instead of integrating the Legion, he killed all of them off. So Ulysses was really the only one left. So he never really felt at home with the Legion. And it all seems like a, it seems really uh, stre- like stre- a big of a stretch. They put a, lot, they put a lot of back stuff in there that if you didn't get it, it'd be very confusing. I guess. I don't know. Villains are a complicated thing, and we should have made a whole thing about it. Well, we kind of are. I don't see what the problem is. Let's just the problem is I'm on. too sick to think about anything. I'm you, getting that's sicker not, That sicker. is not an excuse. It is an excuse. It is not an excuse. I need you to carry the whole podcast on your your broad, atlas-like shoulders. I'm, that is not an excuse. I didn't say it wasn't... That, what? Speaking of atlas, what about atlas? Yeah. Um, uh, Slash... Frank Fontaine, spoiler alert, previous. Is he a good villain is the question you're asking me. Yeah. That is, that, yeah. He's a terrible boss fight. He's the worst boss fight in the history of the world. Um, uh, that's not entirely true, but it's bad. It's among the worst. Um, yeah, I guess he's, he's, there's nothing wrong with him. Okay. I'm not really sitting there going like he's the best. Do you know, oh, you know who I think is always pretty, do you know who I think is a good villain? The, um... Uh, Edgar Ross from Red Dead Redemption, the federal marshal guy. Yeah, he's just yeah, he's pretty good. Yeah, I've always liked him. I've always guys. We really should do a let's play that slash. I should really do a let's play that because that's a great game and Dude, I would play it all the time. I'm not gonna. Like, well, I'm gonna. I would maybe play that. No, I, well, I, I would want to do that. <laughs> uh, no, uh, but yeah, I think that's a. I think that's a really strong villain choice because everything in that game is strong, dude. Yeah, that's true. Although there's nothing to like about Edgar Ross. Yeah, and I think that's. But I think I think that's just a douchebag. I think that's why it kind of why he makes such a good villain. Because first of all, yeah, he's a dick. But for most of the game, he isn't really the villain, quote unquote. Yeah, he's just kind of like you know this manipulative bastard who's really is like you know taking credit for all of John Marston's work. But you could even say that he's not like the main villain of that game, and he just is a guy who sucks at the end. Now, because does the most villainous thing. No, because the 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 reason I would disagree with that is because. He planned to do the whole end thing to John Marston the whole time. Like, that was always on his back burner. Yeah, but he's not, like, the thing in which the main character is trying to, you know, like, work against to succeed his goal. Well, he's kind of working in spite of that to succeed in his goal. Because John Marston doesn't want to kill any of his old dudes. But the fact that his wife and child child have been kidnapped by 
Edgar Ross and the the Bureau of Investigation. Sort of, yeah. So he kind of is working in spite of that, and the spot in in spite of the fact that he has to go back and kill and hunt down his old ba- bandit bandit crew, bandit buddies, his, his motley crew. Yeah, his motley crew of sorts. Yeah. Um. So he's kind of working in spite of that, and I think that makes for you know villainous intent. Yeah, I think you nailed it with that one. That's just a very well written game. Yeah, it's so good. I think that's great. That's like I said, guys. That's that's the game that really put Rockstar on the map for me because I always thought they just, I always thought they made just kind of like you know, <coughs> shoot 'em up. Not really games that didn't have heart. Well, they all have great writing for some reason. But I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna ballpark. I'm gonna just rip out some villains here. Do it. Then a machine gun. Do it. Here we go. Uh, Sophia Lamb from Bioshock Two. You tell me if they suck or not. Uh, uh. <laughs> machine gun. <laughs> Uh, she, yeah, she, yeah, yeah, she's not that great of a villain. Albert Wesker. Uh, he's a funny villain. Yeah, he's funny, but I mean, the whole point of him is like that whole series just can't be BS, you know? Yeah, I think like he's really uh, no I, offense to fans of that. Guy. I would say the original like uh, Resident Evil One, where he totally like screws over the Stars team for the purposes of like performing experiments. That is pretty villainous. That's cold. He's like. <laughs> Well, I'm just going to lead all these people here to their deaths. No big deal. I secretly work for Umbrella. No problems. Right. But actually, there's a lot of good examples of different styles of villains in those series. Because you have, like, a, a, a nemesis. Yeah, but that's uh, that's more... I would say that's more of an antagonist than a villain. Again, because he doesn't really have... Is he the last boss in that game? I never played that game. In three? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Well, no, because he doesn't really... His Jill old... and Carlos are trying to make an interracial baby, and he's stopping him. He's the main problem. Yeah, I think he's really an allegory for not accepting of mixed race. Yeah. We he... both know the real meaning behind Resident Evil. Um, what about uh, Colonel Autumn from Fallout 3? Nah, I never, I never feel like he was fleshed out enough. Because hmm. well, that's the problem with uh, Fallout 3. A lot of things got spread sort of thin. Yeah. Because, like, you know the guy's bad and he's, he's a jerk, but, like, the story is pretty short. Yeah, so compared get, to like, New Vegas. He, he's not, like, all over you or anything. No. He's just kind of like, I'm here. Also, for- that's true in New Vegas, and they say it, too. The the main villains of that game, since they have to change every time, they're not established till like, over halfway through the story. Yeah, well, they're not established until Act 2, because Act 2 is when you really decide who you're going to be siding yeah. with. Which is which can be fairly late game. It's very late game for us. True, because you're like, oh, now I know it's this guy. First of all, you never meet the leg the legate. So if you're going against uh, the the legion, you don't know who the main bad guy is. Yeah, you can say it's ma- Caesar. I would you- say the main bad guy is probably Caesar because he's in charge of everything. But like his death is so meaningless and not uh, it's inconsequential to the final victory. No, that's no, that's a lie. That's that's all there is to it. But that's but what do you mean? It's a lie. Cause, cause here's the deal. They're always like, every time you tell. Oh, them, we know, but in the game. I no, mean. even in the game, they're like. The only reason that the Legion works is because of the strong leadership that season that's season seasonings. That's lightly seasoned. Slicing, all of them. Lightly seasoned Legion. No, the slightly it's the strong reasons. leadership that sees and his magnetic personality. The Legion doesn't have that, and a lot of even a lot of like Volpe's. If you talk to him about it, he's like, I wouldn't want to follow the legate because he's a jerk and he doesn't understand like how he doesn't understand like cleverness and stuff and he just like sends yeah. men off to their deaths. That's true, but then So there's a lot of so by killing Caesar, you're actually like fracturing huge power bases within the Legion. Yeah, but that's it, it, the the game doesn't act like that. No. But I'm saying overall. You're just stupid. I'm looking past the game. I know, you're right to do that too. That's what we do here in the Sons of Area. We analyze things. But like that's that is always dumb about that game how they're like, no, it doesn't really matter. They're like, oh, well, you didn't do this. It's stupid. Uh, you know what a villain? I think I think you do like you, Yevin. Uh, n- no, that's a weird fight too, because that's from Final Fantasy Ten, guys. We talked about this on another one. Did we? I think so. I think we talked about this to ourselves. We didn't talk about villains in one, did we? No. Oh no, we did it in um, plot holes. No, we didn't. We did something like that. I don't remember. We did, anyway, go on. If we did villains twice, that's going to suck. No, I feel but, like we're talking about different villains this time, though. No, we haven't talked about you, Yevon, before, though. The problem was you were like, it's a space squid. Who cares? And that's wrong. 
No, I don't. I don't. I wouldn't <laughs> say that's the problem with it. I think, I think it's cool because it's like this, you know, ancient malevolent entity that's manipulating an entire continent of people to serve to its will, even and is tricking them into thinking that it can actually be destroyed. When in reality, it just constantly is manipulating people so that it can always be like fresh and reborn. Well, no, everyone knows that sin comes back. Yeah. The problem with that game is they want the main enemy to be sin, and it's not because they kind of introduce you, Yevin, really late in the game. To the point of, when you see him, you find out what he is. Like, wait, wait, whoa. It's kind of a mind def at the end, because you're like, oh, crap. Everyone's been being manipulated for the entire... This whole religion is fiction. Yeah. It's just so this creature can constantly be reborn. It's all been a big lie. Yeah, I think that's pretty neato. It's totally neato. It's so it's super rad, but that's the main enemy who is who is you don't know is the main enemy. Which but is yeah, me. I think that's I think that's a good villain just by that aspect alone because it's a, I think that was a pretty decent plot twist. He's not he's not like the that's see that game's great. Period. Oh okay. But I don't know if you could say he's the main villain. Uh, he's the final boss, but the whole game you're not like you Yevon should no, suck but he's, it. He's like the villain of that world because he's causing like. Huge amounts of suffering solely no, for yeah, his yeah, own yeah. survival. No, he, uh, yeah, but he's not the villain of the game. No. But, like, you do, you, you find out that he's... I'm saying he's a good villain. But, uh, uh, like, I feel like a villain is the guy of the game. Uh, he could be a bad guy. You could have, like, a video game where there's a douchey president who's the world's worst douche, but at the end of the game you go and beat up a giant monster and he's been the problem the whole game, that's the game. That's- president Dingbat sucks balls... But Jimmy the giant robot's been terrorizing us the whole game. Jimmy is the bad guy. He's the main villain. Yeah, but, but the, the whatever you know. In in Fallout Two, you fight through all of the Enclave, and then the final boss fight is against Frank Horrigan. You won't say Frank Horrigan is the main villain of that game. He said the Enclave is the main villain. Frank Horrigan just happens to be the last fight. I mean, if you think about it, in real life, yes, that's accurate to exactly what I said. And re- like you, Yevon is just the personification of what is considered to really be the actual villain of that game. E- maybe no, because he's totally he's something totally different. In that, like, you, they don't even think that that's what it is. Like they, they, like when they get to sin, they're like, "We beat it," and they're like, "Oh crap." Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't like, know how they know it's you, Yevon, by the way. We should talk about how... Uh, doesn't, doesn't he say it? Doesn't he like... <laughs> no, he can't speak. Oh, no, he has... I'll tell you what it is. He has one of those, hello, my name is, name tags on. It's gotta be that. It's funny, because in every Final Fantasy game, you're like, well, my name is uh, Titus. I'm a, uh, I'm a Blitzball player. Oh, that's um, Behemoth number three. That's Triton, the robot. Dude, Behemoth number three would be a great song. They always know the names of things. You know, like they see a giant monster and they're like, oh, that's Astrohovlov, you know? Uh, I think like it's written somewhere. Because <laughs> like for some, if you're talking like summons and stuff, I imagine it's written on the, uh, like the temples for a unit. Yeah, but there. no, like monsters, I mean. Oh, I imagine there's some kind of beast, Jerry. It's like I always wonder why everyone's always like, Safer Sephiroth. That's not the name I would have given to him. I would have called him dangerous. I call him, look at that guy, he's crazy. I can get away from me, Sephiroth. Uh, guys, if I was in a fight, there wouldn't be, you know, safer Sephiroth. There'd be the the guy. Let's kill him. There he is. <laughs> we need to cut this short, man. I'm the I'm a mess today. No, we're we're this is all this has been all over the place. <laughs> guys, you're sticking. I hope, I hope it translates to good radio. It, it, it'll it'll be a time waste, guys. That's all we can give you. Yeah, guys, if you were sick, we wouldn't make you do a podcast. <laughs> I don't know if you want to be saying that. What am I saying? <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the point of that last sentence was. Dude, it looks like the dog drooled on this couch. Guys, hey, plugs time. Woo! If you want more dog drool conversations, you know where to find us, right? On the YouTubes. Uh, li- listen, we're not gonna. We're, we're not talking gonna... dog drool twenty four seven. We're not gonna go into it because we've we've given you the spiel every time. But here's the real thing, guys. Recently, someone commented about they weren't sure if they wanted us to advertise us on a website, like plug us. Guys, always plug us. Yeah, word of, of course, mouth. Of course. Word of mouth, guys. <laughs> Who would ever have a problem with that? Because because uh, I don't know it was it was on V, so people might think that's a shadier part. Oh, people might hate us because we're so great looking. Because we have terrible episodes like this, <laughs> episodes uh, of sickness. I mean, this yeah. episode's great. But no, guys. Um, yeah, d- please, word of mouth would be great. Yeah, guys, tell all your friends. Anytime you see a relevant thread on your favorite internet forum, you post us. Do you think that we're great? 
then your friends will probably think we're great. Do you think we're relevant to whatever the conversation is? Then bring us up. Put us in there, dudes. We need your help. We're a young, fledgling podcast. Also, everything else we do. Yeah. And we and without you, we ain't got no podcasts. Yeah, that's well, true. Well, that's not true. We could make it for free and publish yeah, it. We, yeah. But you're going to help us get there, guys. Yeah. So don't be scared. We, we love word of mouth. You know the YouTube. You know the podcast. You know the blog. Yeah, all those things. Just get let other people know about it. Yeah. You know and what I'm saying? Since we finished our plug segment, that means it's time for our world famous speed, speed reviews. reviews. Tom, this is the top 10 best Kirby games in the last 20 years. I wonder if Kirby's existed for more than 20 years. Uh, pro- yeah, probably at this point. So it's Kirby themed. Let's go. All right, Kirby 64, the Crystal Shard. This is the first game which Kirby partakes in crystal meth, and it's a terrible tragedy, and he shouldn't be doing it, but man, was that a fun game. 10 out of 10. Uh, Kirby's epic year. Uh, in this one, Kirby tries to uh, knit the Bayo tapestry again from memory, and uh, you have to help guide him along. He gets a 9 out of 10. Kirby Air Ride. Uh, this is where Kirby dives deep into the world of underground street racing on stars and stuff. But, you know, those urban kids love it, so 10 out of 10. Kirby and the Amazing Mirror. Uh, in this game, Kirby gets lost in a uh, festival hall of mirrors, and he has to find his way out, and uh, he looks all crazy because they are got a bunch of fun mirrors. Uh, 7 out of 10. Kirby, Canvas Curse. Kirby likes to, you draw a line, and then you play it at nighttime on your DS. So 10 out of 10. Kirby's Pinball Land. Uh, in this one, uh, well, he's got crazy little fingers, flippers. Never seen him fall. But he's not deaf, dumb, or blind. <laughs> but he sure plays mean pinball. 8 out of 10. Uh, Kirby's Dream Land 2. Kirby's Dream Land 2 is the incredibly successful sequel to Kirby's Dream Land 1. So, yeah, 1 out of 10. Kirby's Adventure. Uh, Kirby's Adventure, I imagine this is the first one. So, you know, you know, 9 out of 10. Uh, Kirby's uh, Return to Dreamland. Well, Kirby was the... Uh, yeah, I've never heard of this game. I don't think it really exists. 1 out of 10. Kirby Superstar Ultra. This is a remake of the classic Kirby Superstar game, and that had a lot of fun games in it, and it was fun, and it gets a 1 out of 10. 1 out of 10. Anyway, that's it, guys. Guys, thank you for sticking thank with you, us. Thank you for putting up with this one. We'll see, we'll see, oh, boy. We'll see you next <sighs> week.